We're still gonna eat it, but how do I get it out? Hi, it's Kate from Grow Your Own Joy, and it's been a little while since I picked up the camera. I went back to work, um, and things have been pretty busy. I've been picking up some extra shifts as well. So, um, things are pretty much a mess around here. Um, we're also starting construction soon, so that's exciting. Um, so I'm just going to take you along and show you some things that I'm doing to get ready for the week. Yesterday I made a Zupa Toscana copycat Olive Garden recipe, and it was really good. And what else did I do? Um, I just kind of picked up around the house, got caught up on laundry. So today I am doing some cooking. Oh, I also grilled some chicken so that I can use that for the pizza that I'm going to make today. And also um, to do like chicken and steak and roasted vegetables. So uh, I'm going to take you along as I cook and clean today and try to get ready for the week that's coming up. I have a really busy week again, so um, come along with me. So here's part of the excitement that's going on. This showed up in my driveway yesterday and it looks like we will be adding on to our house soon. I might go out and see if there's some more shishito peppers out there so I can blister these and we can have those with dinner. I have um, some green beans I picked. Those are almost done. I also have some in the fridge, so I'm not sure if I'm going to can those or blanch and freeze them. I'm thinking blanching and freezing is the faster option at this point. I have some tomatillos I need to freeze, some little cucumbers that I need to do something with. In here, there's tomatoes and then some radishes that, I mean, they're not the best, but I think they'll be fine for roasting, so I'm cleaning those up right now and crisp crisping them up in a bowl of water. There's the compost that needs to go out, and here's a bunch of tomatoes that I need to do something with. So I've already wiped off the counter, but it's dirty again, so I'll have to do that again. I vacuumed, and I found some more laundry that I need to do. I think it's going to be kind of challenging to do my laundry because I have to go outside and down the bulkhead um, to do laundry, and they're going to be starting construction in my driveway, so I'm really trying to stay on top of that so that... I don't have to make as many trips all the way around the outside of the house to try to get to the laundry. It won't be as um, much of a straight shot to be able to do that. So um, I'm just going to probably do a few time lapses of things I'm doing and stop and talk along the way to update you. And um, that's all I have right now. I'll keep you updated. Cutting these tomatillos in half. I used to freeze them whole, but um, a few years ago I started um, noticing that we get little caterpillars or worms inside of them sometimes. So really this is just for my own peace of mind. I cut them open just to make sure they're fine inside, and then I freeze them. Um, I have... Ooh, these don't look very good. Probably not going to use those. These have been in the fridge a while. I have lots of green beans, and I've decided I'm just going to blanch and freeze whatever still looks good, and everything else will go to compost, and that's fine. It's the end of the season. So that's what I'm going to do. If you hear anything in the background of this video, my husband is also helping around the house, and um, usually on weekends he takes care of dishes and folding laundry and picking up 
So that's what he's doing right now. So if you hear that, um, sometimes he also just makes random noises on the videos. So that's a thing. I don't know how good all these green beans are going to be. I'm just going to try my best to um, salvage what I can. Like I said, um, I was really busy. Um, well, we were both really busy. We had some weddings, family events. Um, they were all really nice. We actually got to go apple picking too. So I have some apples that I'll be um, baking with and hopefully making some applesauce. Um, they've been really delicious, so I've just been eating them fresh. Um, I've just been eating them whole. My husband's been eating them with some Nutella, um, which is also really good. So I'm going to um, get this done, and we'll see. We'll see what else I can get to. So this is what I was able to get for the beans to blanch. Um, I'm not going to get to doing these just yet. I want to get my pizza dough rising before I do anything. And this is the compost that I have. So I really didn't waste too many. There were just a few that were kind of questionable. Um, and I cut off some bad spots. So um, these will most likely be used in like curries or if I put them in a stew or something. Um, so they're not the most tender beans because they're end of the season, but they'll still be just fine. I'm going to blanch the green beans in this water, put it into this um, bowl of cold water. I'll throw some ice cubes in here and then I'll let them dry on some towels before I pack them in to bags. I'm not going to vacuum seal today. I'm just going to put them on, um, put them in regular freezer bags. All right, I'm going to start blanching my beans and I'm going to show you this in very fast speed because it's not super interesting. Um, so here we go. All right, these are done blanching. We're going to take them out, put them in ice water, and um, I'll show you what they look like when they're in bags and ready to go. Once they're cooled off, I'll put them on this towel to dry so that I'm not just freezing a bunch of water with them. So for my um, pizza crust I'm going to make, I'm going to double a King Arthur gluten-free pizza crust recipe. I just have it printed out. I'll try to link to it down below, and I'm not going, to not going to tell you the exact ingredients, but I will show you me making it and what it turns out like. So I do make some substitutions when I'm making this recipe, and I'll tell you the things that I substitute as I go along. So I needed some salt. This is um, whey protein isolate. The recipe calls for dry milk, but I saw some recipes that use this, and I've used this for baking in the past, and it's worked out just fine. This is the King Arthur Cup for Cup flour. Um, the recipe doesn't call for the cup for cup. It uses multi-purpose, but I use the cup for cup and just don't put in the xanthan gum. Um, it says honey or sugar. I use honey. Need some baking powder. I buy this really big package of one pound of yeast, and that lasts me a really long time. The last one I had... Um, went way past its expiration date and it was still active. I just keep it in the back of my fridge. This one's good till 2023. And then I picked up this cup for cup flour from um, Trader Joe's because I cannot find my King Arthur at my um, local BJ's or Costco right now. So this will have to be what works for now if I run out and I'm doubling the recipe. Oh, I also need olive oil, salt, and sometimes I put some Italian seasoning in it and this baking powder.
I grew this butternut squash and I noticed that it's starting to rot right here. Um, I don't know if maybe there's a little bug in there or something. So I'm going to cut this up and roast it today. It wasn't in the plans, but we'll have that with our steak and chicken. And then I'm also going to cut up, I'm going to roast the radishes that we have. And I think I might roast some Brussels sprouts. I'll have to see. Get out, Kevin. We're still going to eat it, but how do I get it out? There's a grub in the squash and she's freaking out. So I took over camera duties. Real food comes dirty. Um, we're just gonna cut a big chunk off of this squash and hope the rest is okay. I, Kevin had to help me. I'm not normally grossed out by bugs, but I, I'm, I'm not happy with this. Definitely not happy. Sorry if this grosses you out. Um, part of growing your own food is that there are no chemicals to put these, keep these things away. So sometimes you do end up cutting off bad parts. Um, so there's the damaged part. I'm happy I caught it before it got into the whole squash. The rest seems to be fine. And there's a little spot here that I'm going to cut off. And I'll just look over it really carefully. And if everything is good, we will eat this. So that was a completely new experience for me. I have never found a grub in a butternut squash before. This is actually my first time growing butternut squash um, successfully, but I cut off, look, I cut off a huge chunk. I just wanted to be safe. I know that I probably could have salvaged more, but, um, and I'm not even typically afraid of bugs in the garden, but that just caught me so off guard. I did not expect something that big to be inside, so sorry if I grossed you out, um, but we're going to, we're going to go ahead and eat the rest of this because it's perfectly fine and there are no bugs in it, so um, yep, just part of growing your own food. Like I said, um, I don't even know if I filmed this or you saw this, but when I was making using kale yesterday, we also have caterpillars on those. So I was picking those off and washing those off, but the kale was perfectly fine. Um, we also have a turtle. So I'm going to look into, um, if we would have safely fed that to him, I'm not really sure, but he does, um, benefit from a lot of the stuff in our garden. All right, I overcame my creepy crawly fear and this butternut squash looks great, smells great. Happy we pressed on. Um, I'll know what to expect in the future that that's a possibility and I won't be as caught off guard. Um, <laughs> it's just something that happens in gardens, but um, I was not expecting that today. So that was pretty funny. Um, let me show you real quick. So I have the butternut squash all chopped up in here. Um, I'm going to add those radishes, um, finish washing those, chop those up and add those and some olive oil and seasoning. I'm going to cook up this broccoli for our pizza. I don't think I need all of it for our pizza, so I might roast some of it as well. And then I have some Brussels sprouts that I'm going to roast. My awesome husband finished all of the dishes. So this is a relief. He also wiped down the stove so that I could get things going over here. So this is this is done. This is from the beans that are drying. Those will go in bags soon. Still burning my amazing candle. I'm so happy I found these. They smell just like a candle that I used to have. Um, the name is different and the company is different, but I'm so happy to have a few of these. If I find any more, I will definitely buy them. Um, this is the um, yeast that was proofing with um, all the other things in there for the pizza dough. That has about, um, let's see, eight minutes left, and then I'll mix it in with the rest of the dry ingredients, and it'll rise again. And just trying to get things done around here. It is four o'clock, so I still have some time. So what I'm going to do is get my things roasting and then mix in my dough and then I'll go change out the laundry and sit down and rest for a little bit and I'll be back. All right, so this has risen. I'm going to mix it in with the rest of the dry ingredients and then it will rise again. I'll put a damp tea towel over the top too so it doesn't dry out. The original recipe says to do this in a stand mixer for the best texture, but I have never once done it in a stand mixer and I've never had any issues. Um, I do 
well, I borrowed my mom's stand mixer and she never asked for it back, so I do have that. Um, but it's just another thing to wash, so I just do it this way. These are the radishes that had gotten so soft. I um, picked them last night and um, this morning when I woke up, they were kind of soft, so I put them in some um, cold water to crisp up and they seem fine now. There's a few little spots that I'll need to cut off of them, but I'll roast these with the butternut squash and then I'll be um, also roasting the Brussels sprouts and some broccoli, but I haven't decided if I'm going to do that with everything with the butternut squash or separate. So we'll see what I end up doing. Root maggots. That's all they are. No, that's what go in your radishes. <laughs> Way things are going today. I purchased these Brussels sprouts from um, Trader Joe's and there are a little bugs in them. They're definitely dead because these are not organic so something probably happened to them. Um, but I'm just taking extra time to make sure that they're really clean and I have, it's not all of them, it's just a few, but um, just trying to make sure that I um, clean them up as best as I can. It's just something that happens, but I do like to um, try my best to get all of them off of there. That's just, some people don't care. Personally, I just can't get past it in my mind. Um, maybe someday I will. I did have an experience in college where I had gotten some broccoli at the salad bar and there were little buggies on my plate and I think that just um, stuck with me and unfortunately I can't get past it so so I'm just taking the extra time right now to make sure to the best of my ability that these are fine um, and then I'm actually going to add some broccoli to this as well and then the rest of the broccoli I'm going to um, steam up and that will go on our pizza It's about 4.30 now, and I'm still plugging away on things. Um, got a little bit of a late start today. We went to a show. We went to see some bands play last night, and then we ended up getting um, food from a local, like, kind of fast service restaurant that has gluten-free options um, at midnight, which we never do, but it had been something we had been wanting to do for a while, so we did that, so... Got to bed late, so I wasn't even up until probably 10, 10.30 when I got a phone call that woke me up. So, um, didn't mean to sleep that long, but I think my body needed it because we were out so late. Um, but that's okay. I'm just plugging along. We'll get stuff done. Um, right now I'm going to chop the broccoli and add that. And then we'll get these roasting. I should probably preheat the oven. Let me do that now. I just put it at 375. That should be fine. So I put the oven on 375. Um, if I end up doing the pizza at the same time and it's still in there, I'll have to change it. I'll have to turn the oven up to 425. But we'll start at 375 and I'll stir it every 5 to 10 minutes until it's nice and roasty. Mm -hmm. that I wanted to caramelize an onion to put on the pizza so I'm going to get that going really low on the stove and then um, and then I should have everything for the pizza I'll have to chop up some tomatoes chop up the broccoli smaller um, chop up the chicken and then I'm using I'll show you I'm using an alfredo sauce so it's going to be like a white sauce pizza um, but right now, 
I'm just trying to get myself to a point where things can just go in the kitchen and I can rest for a little while um, just checking in on it every so often. So let's get that done. ton of onion for pizza but if I have leftovers I can put it in the fridge and we can use it for something else during the week so I'll just chop up this whole onion it's not very big um, we'll be ready so this broccoli is done I can drain it and that's where I'll cook the onions in that burner Time to get the dough onto the pans and let it rise for 15 more minutes and then we'll pre-bake the crust and start topping it. Here's how much the dough has risen. Um, it's not, it doesn't behave like a gluten full um, pizza crust. I have to wet my fingers and spread it out onto the pans. So I'll grease them with olive oil and I'll show you how I do that. So that's how I spread it out. I know it um, is not like a traditional pizza crust, but the water definitely does help um, it not stick to your hands. I did drop a little too much water on it and I just um, wiped it up with a towel. So this will rest for 15 minutes and then we'll get it into a 425 degree oven for about seven minutes so the dough can um, cook and then we'll top it. So this has um, rested and risen for 15 minutes. It's going in a 425 degree oven for seven minutes. Um, my husband shredded up some fresh mozzarella cheese. We have some Parmesan cheese and it's going to be a white sauce pizza. So we have this creamy Alfredo sauce from um, Costco. We got it last year too, it was really good. They also have one that has kale in it and I was actually looking for that one but um, I haven't seen it yet, but if I do, I'll pick some of that up too. Here are the veggies ready to go on the pizza. I have broccoli, some garden tomatoes, and some chicken that I cooked yesterday, and the onions are still caramelizing. And here's an update on the roasted vegetables. Um, we're just going to pop them out of the oven for a few minutes while the pizzas are cooking, and then we'll put them back in. I don't have enough space, but hopefully in the new kitchen we'll have a double oven and I'll be able to do more things at once. I pulled some steak tips out of the freezer. I got them on clearance in a previous haul. I definitely showed that. Um, and I found some balsamic dressing from Ken's that was in the fridge. And it's best by date was quite a while ago. It still smelled fine. So I just used that up to marinate these steak tips and then I'll be cooking them up in the air fryer. And then our dinner will be um, done for tomorrow. We'll have the roasted vegetables, there's steak, there's chicken. Um, and there's also some soup that I made yesterday left over. So, and pizza. So we'll be good for a few days because I'm working late the next two nights. Um, I'm actually working late four nights this week, potentially every night this week. So I'm just trying to make things easier on myself. Um, I also picked up these gluten-free pumpkin streusel muffins from Trader Joe's. 
Those will be easy breakfasts for me for a couple mornings. Hopefully they're good. Um, I've heard good things about them. Um, they're a brand new product they just have this fall. And I want to show you those as well. So I definitely didn't let this pizza cool long enough before slicing it. I'll wait to slice the other one a little while, but I'm really hungry. So I'm going to eat this, and I already tried a little bite, and it's delicious. It has the Alfredo sauce, the broccoli, garden tomatoes, caramelized onions, chicken, mozzarella, and Parmesan cheese, and of course the gluten-free crust. All right, the roasted vegetables are done. The steak is done. All that's left is to um, let things cool, put them away for the week, and I don't know if you can see over there. We have more dishes again, so. Dish mountain. We'll, we'll try to get that done tonight, too. I think I have two more loads of laundry, but a lot of it's stuff I have to hang up, and I don't have any room left to hang things up, so. Um, it's, it's raining out, and when it's raining out, things don't dry as fast, so. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Alright, this video ended up being longer than expected. I, um, I'm just editing this now. That was actually filmed a few weeks ago. I have actually been sick for a little while. And the construction has also kept us pretty busy around here. So, as you can see behind me, still the usual pile of dishes. Um, and other things that I need to get to putting away. But, um, I just finished up editing this video. And there'll be another video coming out probably next week with everything, um, basically the end of September through mid-October. It may have to be a few videos because, um, I have been filming, but I haven't been editing. So, um, sorry this has been a long one. Thank you for sticking with me if you've made it this far. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.